Hi folks, Dan Morgan with Green Tech again. Welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to answer a question that every single one of our customers asks us after we've gotten rid of their bed bugs for them. And that question is, so now that you've gotten rid of our bed bugs for us, how do we avoid getting bed bugs again? We're going to answer that question in just a minute. So stay tuned. We've got a great episode for you. You're watching Green Tech Bug Heat TV. Over the past 10 years, we have done bed bug exterminations for literally thousands of customers. And we've been successful at doing that. And inevitably, at some point, either before, during, or after we start their treatment protocol to get rid of their bed bugs, the following question is asked by the customer. And I think it's 100% of the time. I can't think of one person that at some point, uh, after getting to uh, know them and treating for them, they haven't asked the following question. So now that I have bed bugs and we're dealing with the problem, the question is, how do I avoid getting bed bugs in the future? And it's a really good question and every single person asks it. And there's no real simple answer to it because bed bugs have infiltrated the Southern Ontario area so um, thoroughly over the last few years that as soon as you walk out your front door, uh, there is a significant possibility that you may be exposed to bed bugs. So you can't really avoid being exposed to them. Uh, but there are some things that you can do to at least mitigate the possibility of bringing them back with you back into your home. So on this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about that and we're going to give you some really good tips on how to do that. So before we begin with the, the advice that I'm going to give you, um, you need to know that these days, you can get bed bugs uh, by uh, riding on a bus, being in a taxi, uh, flying in an airplane, uh, going somewhere on the train, sitting in an office, being in a restaurant, um, doctor's offices, hospitals have bed bugs. Pretty much everywhere you go now, there's a possibility that you may be exposed to these bugs. So what you want to do is take some basic precautions so as to avoid as much as possible bringing them back with you on your clothing back into your house where they can take hold and, and begin an infestation in your home. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about on this uh, episode. Now, one thing I want to address uh, before I give you some practical tips on how to at least mitigate bringing them back into your house is that um, a very, very common uh, thing that we deal with are people who uh, are friends with other people that have a, a known bed bug problem in their home. So people say, well, does, you know, uh, for, I'll give you an example. Uh, if if uh, a woman says, oh, you know, my grown daughter and her husband, they're dealing with a bed bug problem now. And so does that mean that they can't come over to visit? And the simple answer to that is, unfortunately, yes, it does mean that. If you want to um, reduce as much as possible the possibility of someone bringing them into your home, the most obvious thing to do is if you know that someone you're friends with or a relative of yours has bed bugs at that moment in their home, don't let them come over. Now, sometimes that's not always possible to say they can't come over. And here's an example. During the holiday season, people uh, have had these plans for a year or longer. They're going to fly in from somewhere else and they're going to stay with you uh, for a week or so during the holidays. So. Some people do opt to say, sorry, I'm going to have to have to put the brakes on that and we're going to have to cancel you coming, but that's not really a very nice thing to have to do. So this is what you can do in a case like that. What you can do is when they arrive, don't let them come into your house right away. If you have a home that has a garage, okay, have them, it seems a little strange, but bear with me for a moment. Have them go into the garage and have them strip down, have some, some fresh clothes waiting for them. And uh, ideally, they should strip down in the garage and leave their clothing and shoes and everything else, including especially their luggage, in the garage. Have them come inside, take a nice hot shower, uh, which might be nice after a long flight anyways. And then you give them some clothing uh, to wear while you do the following. You're going to take their clothing. And you're not going to wash their clothing. You're just going to take their clothing, put it into a garbage bag, and put it into the dryer, your home dryer, on high for one hour. Now, by doing that, uh, it, the heat of the dryer will kill any bugs or bed bug eggs that they may have brought with them in their clothing. Okay? And uh, if it's a home dryer and, it, and the, that dryer is electrically operated, one hour on high should be, will be more than sufficient. If you don't have access to a home electric dryer, you can take that, uh, those articles to a, a laundromat. It's important to know though that laundromat dryers uh, by and large are heated with natural gas and they're usually around 40 degrees hotter 
uh, on the high setting than a home electric dryer. Okay, so for a laundromat dryer, it's uh, on high for 30 minutes only. If you go more than that, you may actually damage the clothing. So a home dryer that's electrically operated, one hour. A laundromat dryer, it's for 30 minutes only, on high, that should do the trick. Another thing is, there are suitcases. Don't let the suitcases come into your home. And if you really want to go that extra step to try to, uh, to mitigate the possibility of any bed bugs that might be in the suitcases uh, coming into your home, leave them in the garage, take a garbage bag and simply put the uh, uh, suitcase into a garbage bag and just put a little knot at the top, doesn't have to be, you know, duct tape 500 times, just a simple knot at the top and that'll contain whatever might be in that suitcase, okay? And now they can come visit you. It's a little bit of a strange procedure. It might seem a little weird at first, but um, if that in fact works and uh, prevents them from bringing bed bugs into your house, it's well worth a little bit of a hassle. Maybe a little bit uncomfortable, might be a little bit embarrassing, but you know what? It's well worth it because the last thing you wanna do is have relatives come into your house, bring bed bugs in your house, because now you have a bed bug problem you have to deal with, and you have the whole social problem where, you know, your relatives gave you bed bugs. There could be some, you know, not so nice feelings that are associated with that. So that's a very practical way to avoid uh, having someone bring bed bugs into your house. Okay, so uh, remember that, and uh, it may be a little bit awkward, but if they've already shared with you the fact that they're dealing with bed bugs then you should have really have no problem saying, okay, so I, I watched this video and uh, what that guy said made a lot of sense, so let's go ahead and do that and everybody be happy. And you know what, you might even laugh about it over Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about uh, movie theaters. You know, a few years ago, uh, bed bugs making their way into movie theaters here in the Toronto area and all of southern Ontario really really made the news a lot. It was three or four years ago and then everywhere you turned uh, you were reading uh, news stories and watching television about uh, bed bugs being in theaters. Now it is true that bed bugs would love a movie theater. Why? Let's go through a little bit of bed bug entomology, okay? What do bed bugs do? Well when the bed bugs feed they feed on us. They feed on blood, okay? So they don't eat crumbs off the floor, they don't eat popcorn, they couldn't care less about that. What they want is primarily human blood and how do they want to get that blood? Well, uh, they want a nice relaxed atmosphere uh, in the dark. Bed bugs don't like the light, okay? So ideally for a bed bug, a movie theater is pretty much heaven. Why? You have numerous human beings sitting relatively still for at least a couple of hours at a time in the dark. It's the perfect place for bed bugs to want to live. And they do in fact uh, congregate there when they're dropped off of people's clothing and it's a public place, it's absolutely perfect. So when you go to places where your uh, likelihood is much greater of bringing bed bugs home with you, you have to be aware of that. So a movie theater is one of those places. We'll talk about a couple more in a second. So let's say you go out uh, with your spouse to a movie, beautiful. So you have a little dinner, you go to a show, it's a nice evening, and now you're on the way home. So the question I get a lot is, well, if we go to a theater, how am I supposed to prevent us from bringing bed bugs back into our house after we've gone to the movies? That's a good question. And the answer is you can't prevent it because prevention implies that it's a 100% solution. And when it comes to this, there's no 100% solution. But you can take some very easy, relatively easy steps to mitigate and lower the chances that you're gonna bring bed bugs back into your house after going to the movies. So what are you gonna do? This is so simple, it's really not rocket science. You're gonna go back to your house, you're gonna go into the garage, and the two of you taking turns are gonna brush each other down. And you know it sounds a little crazy, but it works. You know, bed bugs can be very, very small. Even when they're stage six, fully grown adults, they're not that big. But if it's a stage two or three, the chances of you seeing that on your jeans, <coughs> excuse me, or your shirt, is very, they're very, very small. Very low likelihood of seeing it. So, you know those uh, scrapers where on the other end is a, is a snow brush? Okay, so if you take one of those snow brushes and you just brush down the back of your spouse in the front, and then you have your spouse do that to you, front and back, you're gonna reduce the risk and the chances of bringing bed bugs from the theater back into your house by a huge amount. Now, the next question is, what do you do about your car? Well, I mean, look, you have to live your life. You can't walk around uh, every day with bed bugs being the, the front and center in the front of your mind, okay? Some people do, I've met people like that, but it's unrealistic to do that. So, yes, there's always a chance once you leave your front door and you go out into the real world, you could bring bed bugs back into your home, but of course, there's help for that. We help people every day that have done that. So. 
Take some basic steps, for instance, at the movie theater, you come home, you brush each other down, you should be just fine. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is something that you may think is a pretty simple thing, but if you just do this one following thing after you've traveled somewhere, specifically flown somewhere, uh, you're going to go a long way to uh, avoiding bringing bed bugs into your house after you've flown. Okay, so it's very simple. Your suitcase. So what do you need to know about your suitcase? <clears throat> well. For any of you that have ever had the opportunity to look inside of a cargo hold of a big jet plane, which I have because I'm a retired pilot and I spent about 25 years flying jets for a living, okay? Uh, the cargo hold of an airplane, not the cleanest place in the world. Uh, are they ever cleaned out? Pretty much no. And uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of bags just like this go into the cargo hold of an airplane every single year. So you can imagine a good percentage of those people that have uh, bags in the cargo hold have bed bugs. Maybe they know it, maybe they don't, but they do have them in their suitcase. Now bed bugs can be on, on a suitcase as well. So if your suitcase is sandwiched in hundreds of other suitcases and you happen to be the unlucky one that had your suitcase sandwiched up right next to a suitcase that has a bed bug or two or three on it, well guess what? There's going to be bed bugs on your suitcase. And I have actually seen that a couple of times in real life. So although it's not funny when you see it. So where do bed bugs like to hide? Essentially, and it's not just for suitcases, bed bugs like to hide in places that are dark and places that are relatively uh, uh, undisturbed. Okay, now I say relatively, okay? So for instance, where would a bed bug hide on this suitcase? I'm going to show you. The zipper areas, see this piping right here? We can zoom up here a little bit. This area here, they'd go in between the folds right here. They could go behind the piping right here, underneath the handle. See how this handle sort of telescopes out and in? It's on like a spring mechanism in there. Okay, so that's the kind of place you're going to find bed bugs on a suitcase. So <clears throat> the question is, how do we go ahead and mitigate bed bugs that potentially might be on your suitcase? from coming into your house after you've flown somewhere. This is so simple, it's not even funny. Ready? Okay. Because most of this is actually just common sense, but if you're not familiar with it, you might not think of it. So here it is. When you come home from flying, okay, a good rule of thumb is never bring your suitcase into your house. Now, the very first thing most people do when they come home from a long flight is they get into the front door, they go, wow, what a long flight crummy airline food, I'm so tired, I'm going to go upstairs and go to bed. So they go upstairs with their suitcase that's still full of their clothes, they throw the suitcase onto the bed in their master bedroom, they unzip it and they start going like this, oh dirty clean, dirty clean, right? That's the worst thing you can ever do because if you were exposed to bed bugs in your hotel room, which is a good possibility of that too, and as I say, we'll get into that in another video on how to inspect your hotel room for bed bugs when you're away. But, so there might be uh, bed bugs in those clothes, so you don't want to do that for sure. But as I said, just said, there might be bed bugs on your suitcase and I've actually seen that with my own eyes uh, over the years. Uh, so you're going to leave your suitcase in the garage. Never bring your suitcase back into your house after you've traveled. Just a good rule of thumb. So the next question is, okay Dan, so if I leave my suitcase in the garage, how am I going to get my clothes from my suitcase into my house? I have to bring it back into my house, right? Yes, of course. So in the garage, you're going to open your suitcase, you're going to take a, a garbage bag, you're going to put your clothes in the garbage bag, and then just twist it around a little bit. It doesn't have to be a crazy knot or anything like that. Take it into your home and then launder it appropriately. But the suitcase stays in the garage, always. There's no reason to ever bring it in the house. Because frankly, I mean, forget about bed bugs. It could have all kinds of things on it. There could be other insects on it. There could be bacteria and all kinds of dirt. Who knows what, what it's going to encounter in the cargo hold of that jet. And as I say, not the cleanest places in the world. I've been in them lots of times. So, <clears throat> leave the suitcase in the garage. After you've taken your clothes out of the suitcase, you're just going to take a garbage bag. You're going to put the suitcase into a garbage bag. Put a little knot at the top until you're lucky enough to go on a vacation again. Or if you travel for business, do the same thing. Okay? That's a really good tip to help avoid uh, uh, bringing bed bugs back into your house. So to summarize and sum it up, how to avoid bed bugs in life? Well, you can't prevent being exposed to bed bugs when you're out in the real world, but you can take some very basic steps on how to avoid bringing them back into your house after you've been out in the world. 
Okay, so we hope this helps. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again on the next video.